if it can happen, it will happen. My bad, guys, my bad. So we're just gonna act like we are all brand new. Praise Jesus. I can't. So I've been charging my thing the whole time and clearly it didn't charge and then I put it into my computer and then my computer decided it was gonna update so then it went off and boom, shaka laka boom. God is good. Hey, so we're just gonna start over again. We're not gonna be on super long tonight. Um, I have, I don't remember what we were talking about. Friends, friendship, we were on a tangent. Um, so we're going to, um, I want to hear a particular song guys. We're going to, um, for those of you guys who are praying for, um, friends. Oh, that's right. Thank you. I was getting ready to pray for friends. Jesus. All right. So in Atlanta, yes, about the people who don't have churches. Hey, Tamisha, if you're in the Atlanta area or, you know, you feel led to when you're around the Atlanta area, once a month, we're going to start having um, a fellowship, like a church service, um, probably Saturday nights or something. I think that's what we have. We're kind of settling on. Um, just to, you know, my, my belief is, um, while you're waiting on God to be planted, you could still be growing because where God's going to plant you, he's planting for you to, to give, he's planting for you to serve more so than he is to get. And so even though you may not be in a community of believers where you're grow where you're growing, Hey sister, I love you. Um, you could still be in a community of believers where you're growing. Right. So in the interim, while you're waiting for the next place that God is going to call you to, to serve, we want to offer community. We want to offer prayer. We want to offer, you know, whatever the Lord wants to offer. Um, we want to do that. So we're getting we're, our next our first meeting is going to be, I think, in October. Um, we have dates for October, November and December, just once a month. That's it on Saturdays, um, you know, for people who are just to find themselves um just kind of in between the in-between space uh, so that you can, you know, connect and, you know, meet new people and still use your gifting and still get training in your gifting and all that good stuff. Amen. So um, that's pretty awesome. But for those who um, who are looking, I'm looking for a song, that's what I'm doing, who want new friends um, and you really want real friends. You, you don't want friends that are just going to, you know, can we hang out and go to the movies and stuff. But you want some people to really walk beside you like brothers and sisters for those of us who are not close to our family. And you really crave um, not just getting from people, but you really crave giving, you know, and offering um, your wisdom and offering your counsel, offering resources when needed. I just want to pray for you. Um, that in this season, as we are definitely on the other side of breakthrough, but as God is, um, really, um, showing us, um, what he's doing, um, in this time that I cannot find this song. Um, so we're just going to be random. Okay. We'll be random. Okay. Shasta, it's your song. Uh, that this season you will find those types of people, the type of person that you have been in the past for a lot of us, um, you've been, you, you were that type of person and you, you felt like you got used or you were uh, discounted or you were cast to the side, but this is the season where God is going to send you a group of people who have the sign, the same principles and the same, uh, value. Come on guys, value. Um, and so I can't, so now people are trying to FaceTime me. I don't know if it's frozen. Is it frozen? Is it frozen? Okay. Okay. So they're, they're trying to, I can't, I can't right now. This is hilarious. This is hilarious today. Um, so father, I just thank you God for sending people who are like-minded to uh, sit at the table uh, with these are people and as we have lifted up the desire, God, that we will be sit, set in families, that maybe it's not blood, but we are of the kingdom family, where, where those of us who, who, who feel like you've supported, but you've never really known support, 
that this would be the season, God, where you would send people to come by and to undergird and to plant and to sow expertise, friendship, love, loyalty, 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 um, that these will not be people who would smile in their face and flatter them, but these will be people who would really be iron sharpening iron. And that means we may not always hear what we want to hear. Uh, it may mean that we are being pushed into destiny and it may hurt sometimes, but God, thank you. Hey, prophetess, that thank you, God, that this is the season where your people will not feel like they're by themselves, where your feet, your people will not feel alone, but they will know that these people are God sent and heavy sent, heaven sent. And so uh, even tonight, as we're uh, going back to the word and we're talking about Jehoshaphat, um, Father, I'm just going to go ahead and pray through the word. Uh, Father, we just thank you that um, every, hey, sister, that every um, diabolical plan, every diabolical plan, every plan of the enemy that is coming to not just knock your people out off the trap, out the, the journey or the road, but really coming to take their life, um, really coming to murder their future. Thank you, Father, that these plans are already annihilated as we stand in this place of breakthrough, as we stand and we build an altar as a people for what you have designed and desired for us to do. Because, God, we cry out for the providential will of God, every Ahab that is coming to join himself, the spirit of Ahab that's coming to try and take the throne, every Ahab that is really trying to walk in the door and to uh, come against the season of government, come against the season of authorship and rulership in the lives of your people. We just bless you right now, God, that these plans are dashed to pieces and that these your people are operating in a sincerity of discernment that the discernment is really real, that the, that discernment is kicked up a notch. And it's not just we are suspicious. It's none of that, but really for real, for real, there are some frameworks in place. God, thank you that this is a season where your people can sense your presence so deeply and so quickly. Thank you that this will not be a season where we have to go into days of prayer to find out if this is really you. And so, Father, I now point the prophetic finger at your people in your presence, and I decree and declare that this will be a season where you hear the voice of God quickly. This will be a season where you are able to judge, either commend or condemn as people come into your life, and you will know where to place them. You will know if this person is for a season. You will know if this person is for a lifetime, and you will know if this person is a Judas, and you will know what to do with the Judases. You will not cast them off. You will not be crazy with them, but you will understand that they are also a part of the design of your destiny. To me. Thank you, God, that this will not be a season of freight friendship. I come against, hallelujah, in your life, frenemies. I come against in your life people who join themselves to you and they have a jealous heart or a jealous or envious spirit. We thank you, Father. We pray, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the people who are already in your life and as God is elevating you, that they will not be jealous or envy. We come against that spirit now and we say that it will not seep into your friendships. It will not even seep in between spouses. It will not. You will not be married and sleeping with the enemy. It will not. And for those who are, you know, walking towards marriage, that you will not be married to a frenemy, that jealousy will not be in the relationship, that you will be able to tell your good news and those who are walking with you will rejoice with those who rejoice in this season. Thank you, Father, that while the wall is up, our guard is down. As we are behind the wall, we don't have to be on guard 24-7 because, God, we thank you that you are sending real people sent from heaven. And so, Father, I thank you for an open heaven, for open relationships in this season, relationships where we can give and sow, relationships where we can give our talent. And we know, God... That, that, that this, we are not casting our pearls among swine. And when they're done with us, they will not turn and rend us to pieces. And so God, for every person that that's happened in their life, where they cast their pearls, where they gave, where they did, where they showed up, where they helped. And when the person was done, they turned and they ripped them to pieces. They turned and they literally annihilated and murdered everything that that person did. Thank you that this is the season, God, where you put them back together again. 
Hallelujah. For every woman and dude who is like, you know, you don't hang out with people of the same sex because it's been your experience, dot, dot, dot. We thank you, God, that this is a new season and a new uh, experience. We bless you that old experiences are not prophesied, but the new experiences being poured out from heaven, those are the only things that are prophesied and decreeing and declaring in our lives. We fling off constraint and restraint that is uh, provoked from an old place, that is provoked from an old memory. We decree and declare, Father, that we put on the new wineskins as you pour in new wine. And as what is pouring hallelujah, is new people, but we receive the new people. We receive the new experiences. We receive the new atmospheres in the name and in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so even God for siblings, siblings who are jealous of each other, siblings, you know, when you get together with your family uh, or, or there, there's gossiping, thank you, Holy Spirit. There's gossiping on the phone where one sibling will call another sibling and they're talking about another sibling that in the family line, we will not murder each other. We will not murder each other in the same lineage. We will not murder each other in the same legacy. We thank you, Father, that murdering spirit has been put out. That Ahab murdering spirit has been put out of the family line. But we will be siblings who will call and pray, call and sow, call and give. That there will not be any jealousy uh, among siblings. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And even the siblings from what we birth, where you have children. And there's jealousy among the children. We put that out of our house now in the name of Jesus. Our children will not be jealous of each other. Our children will not be vying for attention from parents. Our children will not be secretly envious. Our children will not have um, um, grudges against one another uh, in the name of Jesus. But come on, there will be one accord in the blood. There will be one accord in our households, uh, especially between our kids under one roof in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, that our kids will be there for one another, that we will be there for siblings and even estranged siblings. Even if you're estranged from your siblings, something happened. We thank you, God, that this is the year, 2018. This is the season where all where estranged situations will come back together. And even if that means that you have to say you're sorry first, but you feel like you didn't do anything. When I, I didn't mean to say sorry, I meant apologize. Never say you're sorry. Well, if that means that you've got to go and you've got to apologize, if it means that it's going to open the door for reconciliation, then baby, open the door because you are the key. And if you are the key holder, then that means you have the responsibility for opening the door. And so, Father, we take up our responsibility. And so for every person who feels like, well, it's not my fault and they did this to me and they hurt me. Thank you, God, that in the scheme of things, that really doesn't uh, matter because the enemy, it, because here's the thing. If you have the key of government, if you're the one that has the responsibility, then you're the one that has the sound of prayer. You're the one that has the authority to come alongside your sibling. Come on, guys, in this season of their life and to do warfare and winfare with them. And so the enemy is using the wedge. The enemy is using the separation where he can wreak havoc in your sibling's life. And so when we stand before the father, he's not going to be like, well, I know, you know, you were really angry because blah, 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 blah. God, thank you that we are a mature people. And so father, whatever you are requiring of us to do in relationships, whatever you are requiring us to do in relationships, we take up responsibility and we say that you will do it. And so I pray for every person on here where there is a wedge, parents, there's a wedge with siblings, there's a wedge with a coworker, there's a wedge with people at the church, there is a wedge. Thank you, Father that this will be the season of the peacekeeper. This will be the season of the peacemaker. Not saying that we're going to go and, 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 and gloss over that which is wrong, but we're not going to be walking around giving people the silent treatment. We're not going to join in with people who are talking about them. We're not going to be like Ugh, within ourselves. We're not going to dread being around them. We are going to do everything in our power and your strength to make it right. <laughs> or rather make it righteous. Hey, sister. And so, Father, we thank you that this is just a season of righteousness. This is a season of righteousness that has been released and loosed over the lives of your people. And we say, yes, Lord, emphatically, we say, yes, Lord, with everything in us. And so as we go and mend, as we go and, and, and build the fence again and make the and build the bridges that were burned again, that there is such a grace and there's such a glory that's being poured out on these, your people tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a season of righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to be in 2 Chronicles again. 
uh, chapter 17. I'm looking at my Bible if you're like, what is she looking at? Um, we're going to be in second Chronicles again, chapter 17. I just want to, I just want to do, I just want to give you some wisdom if that's okay, but it's going to be out of the word. So, um, go to second Chronicles 17. It's kind of where we were last night. Uh, and when you get there, just turn to your neighbor and say, amen, I guess. <laughs> Y'all can tell I don't care anymore because this is a really big gallon jug that took a, that took a minute to do that. It was like a five second hold. <laughs> anyway, okay, I'm back. Amen, I'm back. <laughs> right, I was like, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do this. It's gonna be real quick. And then I had it up there, and it was like, wait a minute. One, two. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Whatever. You know, I, my, my no swag is my swag. My no swag is my swag. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, I got it up there and I was like, I can't get the water out. This is kind of embarrassing, Jesus. <laughs> okay. So when you get to chapter 20, uh, 17, let's say I'm there. No. Mm-mm. 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 Amen. Amen. 17. I just want to give you guys some wisdom about a couple of things that we need to see in the scripture. You there? Okay, I'm at chapter 18. Hey, Shemakai, chapter 18. All right, so we kind of went through this yesterday, um, but I just want to pull out some things because we said we're going to go back to it. And this is in line with the word from yesterday. It's, I, I know. I Hey, I'm thirsty for righteousness. Hallelujah. I see gold dust everywhere. Okay. Yes, I'm thirsty for righteousness. All right, y'all ready? We're in chapter 18. All right. <clears throat> So this is where Ahab, Jehoshaphat aligns himself with Ahab through marriage. And now he comes to Samaria to visit Ahab. Um, Ahab slaughtered, slaughtered sheep and oxen in abundance for Jehoshaphat and for the people that were with him and persuaded. Are y'all with me? I, I'm in the Jewish Bible, so it may have different words, but just roll with me. All right. For the people who were with him and persuaded him. I need you to write that word down um, somewhere or if you're in, in, on your phone, take notes, persuaded. Um, verse three, King Ahab of Israel said to King Joseph, Jehoshaphat of um, Judah, will you accompany me to Ramoth Gilead? He answered and said, I will do. Jehoshaphat answered Ahab, okay? And he says, I will do what you do. My troops shall be your troops. And I shall accompany you into battle. Jehoshaphat then said to the king of Israel, Ahab, but first inquire for the word of the Lord. I need you to circle that. So the king of Israel, who is the king of Israel right now? It's, it's uh, Ahab. Okay. So the king of Israel, Ahab, gathered the prophets. Y'all with me? Verse five. Ahab gathered the prophets, 400 men, and asked them, shall I march? Upon Ramoth Gilead for the battle, or shall I not? The prophets said, March, they said, and God will deliver it in the king's hands. Then Jehoshaphat asked, Is there not a prophet of the Lord here through whom we may inquire? I want you to underline that. And the king of Israel answered Jehoshaphat and said, There is one more man with whom we can inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. Because he never prophesies anything good to me, good for me, but always misfortune. He is Micaiah, son of Emilah. Jehoshaphat replied, let the king not say such a thing. So the king of Israel, Ahab, summoned an officer and said, bring Micaiah, Micaiah the son of Emilah here. Okay, let's go back up. And so Jehoshaphat says the right thing. Jehoshaphat says, Let, let's first inquire of the Lord. Anytime you see, and I put that on Facebook, I don't know if y'all saw that, but anyway, anytime you go to battle, inquiring of the Lord is a sign of righteousness. Even though a king is, is by default, a king is a man of war. 
if you're taking notes. By default, one of the per, one of the functions of being a king was you had to go to war. You had to go to war. You had to. You were a man of war by default, okay? So because of your position, because we got we to gotta remix this to 2018, so we got to put this on. Because of your position, because God is giving you reign in the domain, right? I didn't mean to rhyme, but that was on time. Okay. Uh, because God has given you reign in the domain of what you, where you are. When I say reign, I'm talking about kingdom rule. I'm talking about kingdom function. I'm talking about Matthew 16 and 19, right? He's giving you the keys to, hey sister, he's giving you the keys to every door and any door, right? There's no more separation between heaven and earth, earth and heaven, message translation. And so because of that, you also function as a man or woman of war. Warfare, prayer. Let me break that on down. Prayer. Prayer starts wars and prayer ends wars. But if you do not have strategy, if you do not have, if you did not inquire of the Lord, come here, Samuel. If you do not inquire of the Lord, one, you may be starting a war that God never said to start because prayer will start wars or it will end wars, right? All strategy, we need to get strategy all the time. It doesn't matter how easy it looks. It doesn't matter if we can tell what this is. It doesn't matter. Why? Because it may look like Jezebel is walking, the spirit of Jezebel is walking through the front door. And so now you go to attack Jezebel, but you didn't know that Leviathan was coming in the back door. Leviathan is bigger than Jezebel. Python is bigger than Jezebel. And so while you were going to attack that spirit, you didn't know there was an ambush behind your back. And so God may have told you, to uh to to call for angelic reinforcements for what was coming through the front door so that he could give you strategy through fasting and through community let me say that again through community of what was coming through the back door just because a king went to war he did not go to war by himself if you're taking notes he went to war with an army he went to war with reinforcements and he waged war in the council of wisdom and the counsel of wisdom. And so no matter how easy it looks, no matter how it looks like you can overcome one blow from God and he can cause an army of three to overtake an army of three million. So we always need the counsel of God. We always need the wisdom of God because it's not, it's not our fight ever. It's not our fight ever. There's one fight that is between heaven and hell, period. Period. And so he is the commander in chief at all times. We are never the commander in chief. We are never the commander in chief. We are never the commander in chief. At best, maybe a general. At best, maybe if you want to put that type of titles and functions on it. But at the end of the day, you need to know what you and your, pl your platoon or you and your, you know, section is supposed to be doing in terms of the bigger war. We're in one little battle, but there's a war that's waging. And so we need to understand where we are in the dispensation of the times of heaven and what we need to do. So that's just a side note. Always inquire of the Lord, even if it looks easy. Don't let this be a season where we get beat up and beat down because we jumped into something and we didn't have wisdom. Because it looked easy. Because it looked like all I got to do is open a book and, and read off some prayers. The enemies, it, it, come on, guys. We we know that. And so in past seasons, one of the ways that we got wore out, intercessors, is because we didn't inquire of the Lord. I'm just going to keep it real. I've done it. I've done it. Just jump right in. Hey, okay, you, done buy, you, you, you bound one person or one strong man, but you didn't understand. It was a company of strong men, and there was a stronger man than the one you bound. And so you getting beat up, you getting beat down or somebody calls you. Hear me when I say this intercessor, this is not this. Let me, let me rock back and forth like your grandma. The, the, I need y'all to see this. Jehoshaphat and Ahab. Come on guys. We're about to get into this. Jehoshaphat and Ahab. This was a setup from the beginning. Go to war with me. This was a setup from the beginning. Go to war with me. Come on, I need you to partner with me. Come on, I need you to do 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 do. Mm -mm, you need to hear from God. Intercessors, stop jumping into battles that your name ain't on. 
You can't perform deliverance on everybody. You need to know that you're called to it. Uh, my Karen and I uh, were talking last this morning and we were just kind of reminiscing over when I went through my season of shenanigans and crazy. She was attacked to the point where she could no longer walk. But she knew that she was called to me before I knew that she was going to be walking with me. One morning she woke up and she could not walk. And so we went through, she went to bed, she could walk. Next, and this went on for months, guys. She was in a wheelchair. She ended up in a wheelchair for some months. Now she uses a walker. From somebody else's warfare. You got to make sure you, because if anybody else had been trying to walk with me through that, they may have died. She knew that she was, God had already, before anybody even, she knew some things even before I even knew some things was going on. Right? I'm telling you guys. When people come and they got their stuff, you got to know whether or not you are called to them. And if you're not, baby, it's okay to say, I'm not the one, but let's pray that the people who are supposed to walk with you, they come and walk with you. Because here's the thing, the enemy is going to try and come for you. And if you are not armored for this, it can literally turn your life upside down and inside out. I may not be the one, but I can intercede for the one. Does that make sense? I may not be the one, but I can intercede because here's the thing. The enemy is going to push hard because he's going to, he, he's going to, he's going to need the people who are supposed to help and the people who are supposed to walk with you to shut down. And so these people have to know that they know that they know that they've got the juice to see you through or you've got the juice to see them through this journey, this process. I'm just trying to give you a little bit of wisdom. That's all. I need y'all to think about this and it's okay. I can pray for you, but I may not be the one called to you for this process. Right? So what does that look like? When, when somebody's in the process, you're the one that they're calling. You're the one that they're, you know, you sitting at their door. You'll know when you're supposed to be called to them. You'll show up at their house. You'll have that, that exhortation on the inside of you. But when you start feeling drained and zapped and your life is, there's a hole in your pocket. And it's just like, I, even though she couldn't walk. We would get on that phone and we would pray and we would fast. And she never stopped. She called me more than I call her. If this is making sense, right? And so when we're looking at this chapter, from when, he, when Ahab approaches Jehoshaphat, he is, it's a setup from the very beginning. I need y'all to hear this. It's a setup from the very beginning. You're going to have some people who try to join with you and it's going to be a setup, baby. Ahab was, was looking to kill Jehoshaphat. He was looking to take him out. And so he, did you remember what I told you? I said, circle that word. After some years passed, 18, he came to visit Ahab in Samaria. Ahab slaughtered sheep and oxen in abundance for him and for the people with him and persuaded him. Persuaded him. You know, we got to have some framework in our life. When you start getting around people and they start trying to persuade you and they start trying to flatter and they doing all of these things to get your attention, your antennas may need to go up because it may be a setup. It may be a setup. It may be a setup. You've got something in your hand. I need y'all to understand this. Even if you don't understand what's in your hand, that's what was wrong with Jehoshaphat. He didn't understand. Come on, go back to uh, chapter 17. He had uh, grace. He had riches. He had honor. He had the presence of God. He had the elevation of mind. He had all of these things, but he didn't understand what he had. He had all of these things in his hand, but he did not have understanding. 
Because if he did, he would have never joined himself to Ahab because there was never no need for him to join himself to Ahab. And so number two, if you're taking notes, why are you doing what it is that you're doing? These alliances that you are aligning yourself with, why are you aligning yourself with them? Why is this an alliance? Why do you need to be sitting at this table? Did God tell you to sit at that seat or are you trying to sit at that seat because you got something to prove because you don't understand what's in your hand? The kingdom is divided. Ahab has one side and Jehoshaphat has the other. The kingdom needs to be united. United. So even though it looks like they're on the same team, they're not on the same team because it's two kings. Two kingdoms that are really one kingdom. And so even if it looks like it's somebody who's sharing in the same territory, somebody who's sharing in the same anointing, somebody who's sharing in the same kingdom. I hope y'all are seeing this. Your antenna's got to go up. Why? Because they really could be if they could be sharing in the same kingdom, but they could be sent from another kingdom. How do we? How do we? Um, how do we? How do we annihilate a kingdom? We divide it. A kingdom that is divided within itself cannot stand. Against itself cannot stand. And so the enemy is not going to come and break down the kingdom from the outside. The enemy is going to come on the inside and break down the kingdom from the inside. And so God is saying to you, come on, guys, we're talking about the providential will of God. We're talking about God putting things in your hand. We're talking about God trusting you with government. We're talking about God moving you. Right. And so we have to understand that the enemy is not going to be on the outside of the door. Not you say, let me in. Let me in. I'm a huff and puff and blow the whole structure down. No, he's going to be sitting right there at the table with you. Looking at you eyeball to eyeball, signing off on the same thing, saying, yes, yes, it's a great idea. I think we should. Absolutely. Right. Because that's the only way to annihilate is from the inside out. He's crafty. Come on. Right? And so we're still in, we're in, we're in 18. So he says, Jehoshaphat, verse 4, says to Ahab, okay, but first let's inquire of the Lord. We need the word from the Lord. So Ahab gathered the prophets, 400, and said, shall I march upon Ramoth Gilead or shall I not? March, they said. These are 400 prophets. March, they said, this is real good. And God will deliver it into the king's hands. Then Jehoshaphat asked, is there not another prophet of the Lord? Sometimes when we read the Bible, we read a little too quickly, right? Well, I was talking about that. We read sometimes a little too quickly. He says, let's inquire of the Lord. Ahab calls 400 prophets. And the Bible does not say prophets of the Lord. He calls 400 prophets, 400 mouths, 400 mouths are saying the same thing. Do y'all see this? Ahab, go back to um, uh, Jehoshaphat, go back to chapter 17. The Bible says that God elevated his mind in the Jewish translation. God elevated his mind. So even though he didn't know it was in his hand, he knew the voice of God. I need you to take notes. Even though you may not understand the weight of what's in your hand, the assignment that's in your hand, you understand the voice of God. And so here it is. Jehoshaphat is listening and looking and listening at 400, not four, not 40, not 44, not 100. He's listening to 400 people say, go, go. God will deliver. God will deliver it into your hand. And he has enough wisdom to say, is there not a prophet of God? And then listen to what Ahab says. Well, there is one. So Ahab knew. Y'all see that? Let's read it. Let me find it. Verse six, then Jehoshaphat asks, is there not another prophet of the Lord through whom we may inquire? Bruh, right? And the king Ahab answered Jehoshaphat and said, there is one more man through whom we can inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. I hate him. One of the things that the spirit the, the, the spirit of Ahab, the spirit of Jezebel, we see it with Jezebel, the prophets of Baal, right? Is false prophets. Come on, let's talk about this. 
This is a, this is going this is a mature thing. This is a mature word. Number one, if you're taking notes, I need you from now on. I don't care who it is. I don't care who it is. I don't care who it is. I need you to say, okay, God, I need a prophet of the Lord. I don't need my heart tickled. Come on, providential will of God. I don't need my ears tickled. Come on, providential will of God. I don't need, I don't want the warm and fuzzy feeling. I need to, I need a prophet of the Lord for real. I need y'all to hear this because here it is. 400 people gave them a word that was favorable. That sounded, yes, go, God is with you, go forth, God is for you, absolutely, God's got you. And the truth of the matter was, this was a diabolical plan, and you finna be wiped out, baby. You about to be wiped all the way out. I need y'all to hear me. In this season, I don't care who it is. I don't care where it comes from. I don't care if you land in my inbox on Facebook and I, you know, I'm notorious for that because of prayer. I need you to pray over it and say, is this a word from you, God? Because you don't have time in this season. I need y'all to hear this. I pray this is good. I pray you hear the Lord. Is there a prophet who can inquire of the Lord. Is there a prophet who can inquire of the Lord? That needs to be on your prayer list. God, if you're sending me a word and God uses mouthpieces, God sends a word through people. You know, if you're, you're sending me, okay, God, I just don't need somebody who can pull from wherever. I, I don't need people who can, they're hearing, but they don't know how to hear and they don't know how to translate. I need a prophet from the Lord. I need a prophet of the Lord. Does it make sense? 400 people said, yes, go. If you look at, you know, uh, 17, a lion, no, 16, a lying spirit went out from heaven. A lying spirit was sent from heaven. But if you understand, you will know that it's a lying spirit. All right. So he said, I don't like him. He he don't ever say anything I want to hear. All right. Number if you number 4056, if you take a note, I don't know what number we own. We've got to get out of the place where we only want prophecy, or we only want a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge that feels good. When you look at chapter 18, you are Jehoshaphat. You are holding a portion, a chunk of the kingdom. This was to kill him. This was to kill him. This whole plan was to kill him. These lying prophets was to take him out. All of this was to take him out. All right. Um... So the prophet comes, he gives him the word of the Lord. It's bad. You know, he tells him the truth. So we're still in 18. I'm looking for the, ver the verse. So I want you to read 18. I'm just going to paraphrase a little bit. So they get ready to go to battle. And Ahab says to Jehoshaphat, put on my robes. Because he knew that they were going to set out to kill the king. He's like, put on mine and I'm going to put on the garb of a soldier. And so the Bible says that the soldiers saw the kings. They saw Jehoshaphat in the king's robes and they were like, there's the king. And they rolled up on him to kill him. And the Bible says that Jehoshaphat cried out to God. I need you to write that down. I need you to circle it. I need you to draw a heart around it. Jehoshaphat was wrong for what he did. Jehoshaphat was wrong for joining with Ahab. Jehoshaphat was wrong. He was wrong. He was wrong. He was wrong. He was wrong. But in the moment of trouble, because he knew the Lord, he cried out to the Lord. When we talk about Saul, Saul never cried out to God. David, are y'all seeing this? 
David was wrong. David cried out to God. Saul was wrong. He didn't cry out to God. In Psalms 91, the Bible says, because you have known me in your day of trouble, right? And so even when we're wrong, I need y'all to see this grace. They rolled up on him, getting ready to take his life. He cried out to God and God diverted them. And then by accident, by happenstance, a soldier happens to kill a random soldier who just happened to be Ahab. And so the diabolical plan that was set out against Jehoshaphat, God stepped in and turned that thing around and wiped out Jehoshaphat, uh, wiped out Ahab, right? Because Jehoshaphat, in the end of it all, he cried out to God in that moment. He was like, oh man, he was, cried out to the father and the father saved him because that is the nature of God. That is the nature of God. But I'm saying to you, when we look at this, because, you know, we get to we get to look at this, this from the lens of historical account, right? He didn't have to go through all of this. He didn't have to go through all of this. This is a season, guys, where we've got to put on wisdom from day one. What do you have in your hands? What has God blessed you with? We've got to begin to examine. You've got to begin to understand what is in your hands, right? Not a niece come by and tell you, oh, God has graced you with. Oh, God has blessed you with. Oh, God. No, I need you. I'm begging you. I am pleading with you to go before God the rest of this month of August in prayer, in fasting and ask God to give you divine dreams. Ask God to give you open visions. Ask God to show you in the scripture. Ask God to open up your understanding. God, what's in my hands? Responsibility, power. God, what's in my hands? The work that you called me to do. God, what is it that I'm carrying? Don't let me be carrying all of these things that I don't have understanding of. Because I too would then think I need something else or something extra. When you know what you're missing, then I understand the sound of a person, divine connection, who was holding the key that I'm missing. But if I never take inventory, if I never take inventory of who I am to him and what I am to him and my, I'm not talking, when I say function, I'm not talking about offices. I'm not talking, I'm no, how you function in your territory, how you function on your job in your neighborhood. What is your function? What type of favor has God graced you with in this season? There's different types of favor. What type of favor has God really graced you with in this season? What is the cycle of answered prayer in your life? What is in your hand? You've got to know what's in your hand. You've got to know the season that you're in with God. Because here's the thing. Come here, Hannah. I'm preaching this on Sunday, but I'm not trying to preach it now. The man of God walked by her, the priest, the Levite. She's on the altar and he could not discern what God was doing. He could not discern. He's thinking she's a, he was translated daughter of demons because he thought she was drunk. How long will you be drunk? Oh, daughter of Baal. She was praying. She's praying. She was praying. God will shroud some things from others because he is pulling you to him. And this contract is between you and him. This covenant is between you and him. What is in your hand? What is in your belly? It's time that we got to take inventory. Because any, it, 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 God has given us new identity. God has, uh, you know, uh, not new identity, but God is, he, he has revealed our identity. He's poured new wine into new wine skins. And so the enemy will try to poke holes in a new wine skin. I need y'all to hear this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But what will happen is the enemy's going to come by and he's going to try to poke holes in new wine skins. And because now there's a hole in your new wine skin, you're going to feel like it's an old wine skin. And he's poking the hole, trying to get you to think that it's an old wineskin so for, for you to fall back into old habits. 
And a lot of times, we, we all of us have come from a place where we were doing things and we were showing up places because we were trying to prove some things to some people thinking it was going to give us value. Come here, Jehoshaphat and Ahab. There was no reason for him to join. There was no reason for him to join. He had God. You have God. And so I don't care who it is. I don't care who, where it is. You need to know, and this is this an alliance that is ordained by God? I don't care who it is. I don't care where they come from. I don't care what they're telling you to do. I don't care what they tell you they can put you on. Is this need, needed and needful? Jehoshaphat was the one with the anointing. Jehoshaphat was the one with the presence of God. Jehoshaphat was the one with the covenant from God. Jehoshaphat was the one who had the attention of God. Jehoshaphat was the one who knew the voice of God. Not Ahab. Y'all see, y'all see who really had the power, but who didn't understand they had the power. You didn't need to join your them kids together. You didn't need to let that marry into your family. You were on track to unite the kingdoms through your lineage alone. And here it is. You done married the kids. We're not doing that. If, if shenanigans gets in, you open the door. I need you to write that down because we're talking about the providential will of God. If shenanigans gets in, you open the door. If shenanigans gets in, I open the door. Oh, the devil is busy. He's busy. Oh, so busy. No, you open the door. This is a hard word, but it's real. Before we enter into anything, right? The people, I'm just, I'm just going to keep it real. Can I just keep it 100 with you? Every table you sit at with counsel, you better know that God called you to that table to get counsel from. Every place that you sit at right now for counsel, you better know that God says yes to this place of counsel. You better know. You better know. And you better know what type of counsel you're supposed to get from that place. You better know. You better know. This is not the season of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. If we are confused, it's because we open the door and say, come on in confusion. Come sit at the table with me and clarity. Come on in confusion and come sound your voice. Come on, guys. So that now there's a competing voice with the voice of God. Not this season. Hallelujah. So, um, I just wanted to kind of submit that to you guys. I'm going to pray for you. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this word. I God, I bless you for all of these Jehoshaphats. I thank you, God, for this season of government and, and rulership and authorship. And I thank you, God, that Ed, we are in a place of examining, one, what is in our hands? The calling, the purpose, the power, the assignment. What's in our hands? What's in our hands? And, 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 and what's in our hands, the places that we've submitted, who we are revealing our hand to. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Who we are revealing our hand to. Are we supposed to be revealing our hand to them in this season? Some of us, I mean, the Lord say, you are, you are in a place, and it's not that they're evil. No, it's not that the person is evil. But here's the thing. If they have an open door, they're latching to you. And so every time you tell them something, you were revealing the plan of God. And so it puts you in these boom bust cycles, right? You're like, oh my gosh, uh, prophet is lame. I'm using you for example. Oh my gosh. Like I just ran into this person at Walmart and they've got five houses. They're an investor and they're ready to sell these houses and they want to use me to list these houses. So you call on the, on the phone and you telling and you rejoicing and then you never hear from that person again. If you have a, that kind of cycle that's going on in your life, this is a season where the Father is telling you it will be wise for you to shut your mouth. It will be wise for you to come home, to sit before Holy Spirit and be like, oh my gosh, Holy Spirit, can you believe what happened? 
Holy Spirit has got to be our first go-to, and then he's going to tell you who, who, who to call on the phone and say, hey, will you cover this? Will you cover this? Because sometimes on the other end of that phone, you don't know if the spirit of envy and the spirit of jealousy is sitting there listening. Come on, guys. Come on. If you, it's like, you get right there and you know you got the goods, you know you got the juice, God, you know you got the word, you release the decree, you know it's the season, and then you go and you spill the beans, and every time you spill the beans, it doesn't happen. Something happens. Yeah, we decided to go with someone else. No, we decided we weren't going to sell. No, you know, no, no. So first, first one, think Holy Spirit, we've got to go back to the place where Holy Spirit is our rejoice partner. The Holy Spirit is definitely going to rejoice with us when we are rejoicing. Absolutely, freaking lutely We've got to go in our house and we've got to sit before Holy Spirit and we've got to rejoice and dance with the Holy Spirit for what the hand of God has done and prepared. And then he's going to show you who to show your hand to. He's going to show you who to show your hand to. And they're going to know what to do with what's in your hand. He's going to show you. He's going to show you. He's going to show you. Amen. And so, Father, we just thank you for, for revealing to us who are we to reveal our hand to in this season. Every undue warfare that is surrounding the manifestation and the manifested provision the manifested provision, the manifested vision of heaven coming to pass in the earth for us and in our lives that we are to govern and to steward and to divvy out by way because we are a distribution center. You are a distribution center in the earth. You distribute the glory. You distribute the name. You distribute the presence. You distribute the assignment. You dis Come on, guys. You distribute grace. You are a distribution center. You distribute resources. And so the territory can't change if the distribution center or the storehouse is depleted. The enemy wants to keep you a storehouse of heaven. You are a storehouse of heaven. I need you to stop looking at yourself in terms as you are a person. No, you're a bank. You're an ATM. You're a storehouse. You're a distribution center. You're a warehouse. You're an assembly line. And so God will send people, and you've got to know in this season, what am I? God will send people who are in bits and pieces, and you have to know that you are an assembly line for heaven. That God uses you to put people back together again. He uses you to make sense of their fragments and their pieces. And when they get done with their season, season, not forever, season, number, you, we got to stop trying to be forever with people. Well, I was there for them. They called me and I always picked up the phone and I was like, no, you were there for a season. You need to understand you are, they visit. God sends people to visit and to get, and then they leave. They come, they get, and they leave. They come, they get, and they leave because it's your assignment. Stop trying to hold everybody close. Stop trying to make everybody your bestie. Stop trying to make everybody your sister. No, we need to know what, what our function is. And when people come to us, what their function is and how we're supposed to function together. And when it's over, let them go. Hallelujah. And so you are a distribution center for the father. You distribute all sorts of things. You're, you, you, you are a, a, a bank, an ATM of heaven's resources, of assignment. Do you understand that you carry clarity? I need y'all to hear this. Why you struggle with confusion so much is because really you are a carrier of clarity. That when you open your mouth, uh, confusion disperses. And so you just like, I don't know. Like everybody comes to me, they're just always confused. I don't know why people always bring me their problems. Come on, how many of you guys say that? I don't know why people always come to me and they reveal all their problems. And they tell because you are a carrier of clarity. You are carrying the breath of clarity, which is God, which is Jesus. Yes. And so people, God will bring people to you so that clarity can scatter confusion. And so that's why, that's why it's always, uh, it seems like a state of confusion is always swirling around you. You've got to resist the enemy, resist confusion. Confusion is your enemy. Y'all see this? Confusion is your enemy. You've got to resist confusion and it, he will flee. 
Because you've got to make sure if I'm a distribution center for the clarity of Jehovah, the clarity of Adonai, the clarity of Christ, then I've got to make, I've got to resist confusion. And so, sister, if you messy, I can't, I gotta, I can't. Even if we're on Facebook and you messy, I can't because I understand nothing is neutral. It is a spirit of confusion. And does it take all that? Does it take all that? Does it take all that? I don't know. Does it? I don't know about you, but I'm tired of getting in those seasons and having to claw my way out of this confusion and swirling. If you gossip, baby, honey child, I love you, but I can't. I'm not going to share a meal with you. I'm not going to get on the phone with you. And I'm not going to read your stuff. Can I just keep it 100? Can I keep it 100? When I see Christian people, anointed people, on social media and they're always negative. They're always talking about people, but it's under the guise of Christendom. But it's but they're always like ribbing on people and, and nitpicking. Unfollow. Snooze for 30 days. Unfriend. I understand. Social media is a gate now. And you're letting it all in your gates. Come on, sister. Are y'all hearing me? There's some really anointed people and everybody, everything they say, it's like they coming for you, always coming for people. Kermit the Frog is always sipping some tea and you got something to say about what people are doing. Snooze. It's, it To me, that is just as bad as the people who be with the memes and it's cuss words and crazy shenanigans. It's the same thing. Hey, sister, only, only yours may be more dangerous. Yours is more dangerous because you know better. So you're entering into something because you know better. You're doing something and you know better and you're refusing to now nah, snooze for 30 days. Snooze, let me unfriend you and unfollow you. I'm telling you, you are a distribution center for clarity. So you gotta, you gotta make sure no confusion. No confusion. No confusion. Even if um, you, you watching TV, Come on, it's a different spirit. Come on, they're doing, but they, and they should know better because they have the spirit of God. So they're more dangerous. They're more dangerous. And so I'm telling you, I'm just telling you guys in this season, right? If I, if I get on here and y'all see, I start being messy. You know, I make my jokes. Let me, let me just be honest. I make my jokes. I do. But if you're around me for like a couple minutes, I will make a joke because I'm always asking God. And I know people think it's funny when I'm like, oh God, sanctify my sense of humor. Oh God, I'm not joking. I immediately get convicted. Immediately get convicted, guys. Immediately get convicted. And I'm like, oh man, Ugh. that's my Achilles heel is my sense of humor. I don't cuss. I don't do anything like that, but I'm quick. I mean, it's quick. I just... You know, it's quick and it's funny. And the Holy Spirit be like, nah, sis, you can't do that. It's not love. So I have to repent. And so, you know, you'll hear me say, oh God, please forgive me. And so the other person may be laughing, but they don't understand. Like, I'm really, ah, I'm trying, I like, this is, this, I'm just being, 100, I'm being totally transparent. To I, the joking and the, you know what I mean? So I'll get on here and I've said some things, you know, about my shoulder and why I need to bind them and stuff like that. And when we cut off, I was like, okay, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because that does not bring honor to God in any way, shape, form, or fashion. I'm just being honest. And so unless I'm offering a solution, unless somebody's offering a solution for some shenanigans, unless we're saying, okay, come on, because uh -huh, we got the same sense of humor. Um, come on, this is what's going on. What is this? How do we pray about this? I can't open the gate to confusion anymore, right? Can't open the gate to shenanigans anymore because you're a distribution center for the glory, right? You're a dis and that's how, that's how heaven wins. 
That's how the, the, the righteous take it by force. That's how heaven wins is when we watch our step in every way. And so I'm saying to you guys, Jehoshaphat, you need to understand that the spirit of Ahab is chilling with you in the same room, in the same territory, and you've got to have your eyes wide open and you've got to rely on the power, the presence, the spirit, and the name of God. And you got to know what's in your hand and you got to know what you possess. And I know a lot of us, you know, you like, who am I? I'm, you know, just a, just a, I'm chilling over here. Just let me talk about me. I just be like, you know, like people will, can I just be, I'm just going to, I know this is going to be funny, but I'm not trying to be funny. I promise you I'm not trying to be funny. People will land in my inbox on Facebook. I'm not lying. People will land in my inbox on Facebook and they'll friend, that they'll friend me and we have friends in common. And so I friend them. And immediately they, they run to, to, to message me and they like give me a video of their live. And I don't, I don't know what to do with it. And so I'm like, Shasta, I know is probably laughing. I'm like, I don't, okay. I'm not going to watch two hours of your live. I never said I would. So I'm not going to feel bad about not watching this because I don't know you. This is crazy. And so you know, they'll just, and then they'll come back like five minutes later and they'll be exactly. And I'm, and I, I'm like, look, I, I don't know who I, I'm, I, we, we just do Periscope. Our family is really, really small. So not a superstar, not a celebrity. I, I work a couple of jobs. Um, you know, no, just, you know, just chill it, you know, Hey man, I got, I was thinking about you praying for you. But a lot of times, and this, is, and this is for everybody, you you know, when you don't know what's in your hand and you don't know, I don't know, I don't know, but I'm not going to watch two hours of a video or they're thinking, sister, they're thinking that you have a, you have some sort of platform to put them on. And I'm like, I don't have a platform. I can't put you on. I'm not trying to put on anybody. I'm not trying to build no platform. Let me rock back and forth like your grandmother. And I'm not going to watch this video because it's long. I don't even watch my own videos because they're too long. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. But this is what I'm saying to you. Ahab saw what Jehoshaphat did. No, but, and I just use that, but people, people are going to do that to you on your job. People are going to do that to you in your church. People are going to do, I'm telling you, people are going to come up to you and be like, I don't, because you don't realize what's in your hand. You don't realize that the presence and the power of God is rolling with you so hard because you don't want a platform because you're not trying to be great because you're not trying to set up in the street and sign autographs. The spirit of God is rolling with you real hard. And so people see that even though you just be chilling with the Holy spirit and you so used to it, you used to it. You feel me? You used to it. And so we have to understand What's it? Our, and, and we're still praying, even though it sounds like we're telling jokes. Well, you know, we're still praying. And so you are a distribution center for all things glory. You are. Yep, <laughs> you are. You are a distribution center for all things glory. And you know your identity and that you are going to stick to the assignment in this season. The same way I'm, stipping, I'm sticking to the topic. You're going to stick to your assignment in this season. You're not going to give territory to the enemy. Yep. And this is what I'm saying to you guys. You never have to want for more. Come on, Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat had everything he needed because he had God. God was with him and that's why he had the increase. God was with him. That's why he had the favor. God was with him. God was with him. God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. So it may look like somebody else is doing better, getting the promotion. You know, their blog has 50 million people. Your blog has two. Come on, sister. Where's my hand? Hallelujah. But at the end of the day, if God is on my side, then I'm going to write my blog. I'm going to write my love letters to God. That's what my blog is. I'm, I'm, I'm releasing some of this pressure. I'm releasing some of this work. So it's not about numbers. And so when you get to that place and that's like how you roll, God is with you, right? Come on, Shasta. God is with you. And so, yay, Jesus, right too. And one of them is me. And then the other one is me too. Cause I just have a million different emails. I do that. So anyway, 
Um, and then I email myself the, the blog where it says share. I share it with myself. Get them numbers up. Now I have four views. Four, baby, four. Um, and so this is, this is Father, you know, um, yes, God is, God is with you. Yep. God is with you. 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 So I don't care how you think about yourself. I don't care what, what you think about your skill, your talent, your ability. God is with you. When God is with you, it super empowers you. It super imposes you. Why? Because God is standing up and God is the one that is doing the work. And you get the benefit while he gets the blessing. And so, Father, I thank you that they will not, we will not be overtaken or overshadowed by dumb stuff and Ahab. The spirit of Ahab. That you're enough. You're enough. You are enough. You are enough. And so this is the best week ever. Hallelujah. Because we understand that you have, you are an eternal God with an eternal word. And you provoke us to provoke you by releasing an eternal decree, which is your eternal word that was written by an eternal God, which is you. So it's a cycle. Y'all see the cycle? He provokes us and we provoke him. He provokes us and we provoke him, right? When I say provoke, I'm not talking about, and God, you promise, and I'm commanding you better, God. That's crazy. That's shenanigans. You know, calm down on that. I'm saying you are provoked to good work. Come on. Your child provokes good from you when they know you. Your child provokes you to get up. Your child provokes you to bless them. Your child provokes you. And that's what we do when we understand the eternal nature of God, the eternal word of God, and we release it back to him as an eternal decree, it provokes him. And then he provokes us with blessing, with benefits. And then we provoke him and he provokes us. And he, we provoke him and he provokes us. And it's a, a cycle of blessing and benefit, blessing and benefit, blessing and benefit, blessing and benefit. Hallelujah. And so Father, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you that we're hearing from you. Thank you for divine dreams the dream of the Lord. Thank you that we're hearing so clear. Um, I decree and declare that even some people um, this week will be so arrested in the spirit. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. This is going to sound crazy. When we got off the scope yesterday, I was, you know, I hate use it being like we deep arrested, but I really couldn't, I couldn't move. And God just kept speaking and he kept speaking and he kept speaking and he kept speaking. Remember, I told y'all everything that God released yesterday, he had not told me. So it was new to me, too. It was new to me, too. And so when I got off, my head was blown. My mind, I mean, I was just I was just wrecked and I was just arrested. It was so crazy, guys. I had to sow a seed. I was like, I, I got to sow into this. Y'all know I'm big on seed sowing. I was like. Of what's in my account, let me release it because God, oh my gosh, thank you for speaking. Thank you for speaking. And so I just agree upon you guys that God's just going to arrest you. He's going to arrest you, not because you were watching somebody's live or nothing like that, but he's just going to speak and it's going to be so profound and this is going to blow you away. It's going to crack open your mind. It's going to crack open your nowhere. It's going to crack open and it's going to challenge. It's going to challenge your intellect. It's going to challenge what you think you know. It's going to challenge your experience. And yesterday I was just like, oh my gosh. So Shasta was texting me and the word of the Lord just kept coming. The word of the Lord just kept coming. The word of the Lord just kept coming. And so I'm like a kid, you know, when I'm praying or something and the word of the Lord just, keep, I just be like, I need to call somebody to release the word. I, I do that. So I just, I told y'all that I, I'm like a kid. If you ever watch kids who are under the glory, they don't know what to do with themselves. They just be all over the place. Like, you know, and that's when I, when the glory is resting. I don't know what to do. And so I just was like, you know, if you text me or you call me, I'm going to be just releasing the word. They'd be like, hi, Anise, how are you doing? And I hear the Lord, Lord say to you, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? It's crazy. I'll be walking around here like, I got to call somebody. I got to call somebody. I got to call somebody. I got to go, you know? And so I'm telling you the glory, we're just, we're just in a cycle of glory. And I believe that you're going to be arrested uh, by the glory. You're going to be arrested. Hallelujah. Yep. 
arrested by the power of the presence of God and it's really just going to break open some things for you um, in this season. And so, Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for speaking to us. We don't, because we could be somewhere and it could be man speaking and not God. And so we just are so grateful. Jesus, so grateful. Amen. So I love you guys. I love you guys. Please, 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 in your devotion this week, add some of this into your devotion. Let the Lord really draw out what he wants you to see in this narrative. Yeah. Draw out what he wants you and then really put it on. Really put it on. Amen. 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 Amen, DJ. So I love you guys. She said, I'm going to stay out your inbox. <laughs> you silly. <laughs> uh, amen. Amen. Just don't be, I don't know what to do. Y'all know I'm real simple. You friend me. Okay. No, we're about to get off. Is anybody else on Facebook getting like those people, they friend you and then like five seconds later, they show them like, hey, how are you doing today? And so your antenna goes up and you're like, hey, have you heard the good news? Is anybody getting them messages too? I'd be like, the good news of the gospel or a government program that's going to have my name was on a list. Yeah. And so I try to be really nice. And for those of you guys who are doing the 30 day dating challenge in her singles diary, we talked about this. I don't, I'll, I'll say, I always say this. I always say no ma'am and no thank you. But I, but I was looking at the list. I was looking at the list and I saw your name on it. I said, you know, I don't, I don't block them, DJ, because I feel like I ignore, but like, after I say no thank you, I know y'all are like a niece. I'm like, it's a scam, but you got to really be in a sunken place because nobody's falling for it. Nobody's falling for it. Really? You saw my name? I don't know. It's like, I don't know. I've never went through the, the, the rabbit trail to see where they go. Yeah, the good news. I'm like, is, are we a Jehovah Witness? Is it, you know, I'm like, girl, I see. And so I'll, I'll go to their profile too. And it's just, it's like, it'd be like, you know, amen, amen. How you been doing? I've really been praying for you. Really been praying for you. If you, here's the thing, the only way you should pay for a grant is if you write, if you pay somebody to write the grant, you should not be releasing four or $500 to get some free information about grants. Google G O O G L E Google it. I'm just saying, but still I'm like, sister, honey, do you, do you, do you really have a real business on the inside of you? Can we talk about what's a real business? I saw your name on the list. He just friended me. Like, really? I can't. Yeah, there's a lot of scams out there. There's a, but, but then some of them, they then they want to send the, you know, the teddy bear, the withholding another teddy bear saying Jesus loves you. I don't, I don't respond to those either. Okay, well, have you heard the good news? That Jesus loves you and it's the best week ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of scams up there. Um, my thing is everybody's profile is being duplicated. If I always try to go to the person's, you know, if we don't have any friends in common, I'm probably not going to friend you. But you go to their profile and they got four friends. This, you, you done took somebody's profile. Stop it. This person, stop it. Right? Um, but them good news people, they, 
they're pretty persistent. Have you heard the good news? The government's giving up money. No, no, no. Right. So, you know, I just wanted to see if y'all had heard the good news and what y'all did with the good news. Amen. Amen. So, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, I hope you don't. Because, I mean, they just. And they always start out like, hey, how are you today? Fine. Have you heard the good news? No, thank you. You don't want to know about the government grant that can give you $10,000? No. Amen. So we're going to be on tomorrow. I think tomorrow we may just do some prayer. Um, we'll see. Um, <laughs> and... Um, Shasta just text me and say, get off the scope. All right, so I got to go. See how they be keeping me in line? Because, you know, I don't know. I got it from an imitator of a business person, so I checked with her and it was a scam. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of scams out there. Uh, if it's something that lands in your inbox, usually if it's a link. If I don't know you, you know, I don't... Um, if you share a fire or something about government, is that bad? What do you mean? Love you, man of God. We're praying for you. We're praying for you. You mean like if you, if the Lord reveals something to you and you put it up on Facebook? Um, no. If the Lord tells you to, then, you know what I mean? If you don't have any checks in your spirit about not to, um, they, I'm sorry, I'm getting text messages. Um, then no, I, I, I have, I don't post a whole, whole lot to Facebook. Um, I have a bunch of things, but I, I usually just kind of pray about it and whatever the Lord like really pushes me to release, I release it. But if there was no checks or anything from Holy Spirit, people may always have something to say um, about what you do, right? And what you say. I've had people, I have a very diverse friend group, if you will. And some people will stop, you know, following you because you say Jesus too much. Um, if the Holy Spirit didn't say, hey, don't just pray on that or send that to certain people or whatever. No. No, we, you know, if, if Holy Spirit is the one to edit us. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. But I always pray about anything I release. I know, does it take all that? I feel like I'm going to be judged. Yeah. How many siblings do you have? Because I pray for you and I feel like, good night, sister. Um, you know, praying for your family kind of general. How many siblings do you have? He lost his mom, um, what, maybe two months ago? He lost, he just lost his mom. So please keep Clarence and his siblings in prayer during this time. Yeah, I mean, some people are just going to have a problem with that. Um, People are always going to have a problem with something. You can't, you got to be a Jesus pleaser, not a people pleaser. Um, yeah, please. His name is Clarence. Just whenever you, um, come on, Shemekai. Come on, Shemekai. God has honored his word. Come on. Yeah, just, you know, um, grief is real. And he really, 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 really honored loves his mother so yeah so let's keep him and his siblings um really lifted before god because that's a lot All right for those for those of us who have lost a parent you know you've lost a part of yourself and it's real like it's real so 
yeah, it was awful. It's that's mm -hmm. it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're praying for you. We're, I just want to let you know that. I just want to let you know that the Father brings your name um, a lot. I just want to let you know that we're we're praying for you. We're praying for you, and we're with you. You know, we're with you during this time. Come on, Shimakai. That just whew, makes my heart happy. Yep. Yeah. Blessings to you, Victoria. Yeah, it's, it's nothing like it. You know, your parents are a piece of you. And, um, you know, certain times of the year, totally we're getting ready to go into the, uh, the holiday portion. It, no matter how long it's been, it's, it can be tough. You know, so everybody who's lost a parent, your parents, um, you know, we're really stepping up our prayers during this time as we're getting ready to hit that holiday season. Yeah. Yeah, you really honored your mom. You really, you really are a good son. You, you guys, he, he really is the epitome of a good, good son, good son, good son. He, he honored his mother, loved his mother, was there for his mother. And so, you know, let that console you. You being there, and yes, it was, you know, hard to watch and hard to go through, but you didn't miss any time. And let that console you. You don't have any regrets. You were there, right? You were there. Death is, um, mm -hmm. what did you pray? Um, death is, is a part of life. Death is a part of the life cycle, right? Um, but that doesn't mean it ever gets easy to deal with, certainly in certain relationships. Amen. And I, I noticed a lot of people have lost um, parents this year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people have lost parents. And so we're just praying. But Clarence, you know, you're a part of this community, our family. So I just want to let you know we are praying for you. We are praying with you. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. I love you. And we will be on tomorrow. And I will probably be wearing the exact same thing. High five. All right. Y'all have a good night. Love you. Good night. <laughs>